Welcome everyone, Farmer Cop here. This is going to be a guide to the interactive productions by ER Shaba. So we're going to go ahead and start off uh, by going through each one of the different productions because it adds five different products into the game. And at the very end, we're going to talk about if it's actually worth making these products. So we'll talk about all that as we go through. Uh, the first thing we're going to look at is Artisan Bread, which if we go into here, um, you can see if we've got an artisan bread, there's no, of course, no selling point available. So never mind, right? Look at that. But artisan bread is what we're going to make today. So we do need a few different ingredients. Now, first off, and again, I'm going to do this for every single one of these that we go through and kind of treat these like separate um, tutorial videos for each one in a way. Um, so there's going to be um, down below, there's going to be different uh, chunks or sections um, or timestamps down below in the YouTube slider bar if you want to skip ahead. Or if you just want to look at the profitability, you can also skip ahead to that. So first, we're going to do bread, which we go into... Here under production, this is the artisan bakery right here. It's this building right here. So once you place it down, it's going to be thirty-three thousand dollars to place this one. Um, and then if we go into our production menu in here, um, artisan bread, we're going to go ahead and activate it because we need to activate it. And then you can see here's our inputs and here's our output. So it's going to do this fourteen hundred and forty times per um, month. So if you have your days or if you have your time set to one day months, this is going to happen every day. If you have it set to two day months, this is going to happen every two days, and so on and so forth. So if we take a look at the recipe, it's 8.8 .8 liters of flour plus 2 liters of sticks and plus 4 liters of mineral water to get you 5.5 liters of artisan bread. So um, flour, if you don't know how to produce it, I'll have a card pop up on the screen that's going to show you how to produce flour in the grain mill. Um, so if you're curious how to do that, that's going to have a card that's going to pop on the screen. So you can just take or you can take a look at that video to know how to produce flour. It's a base game product. But if you already know how to produce that, no big deal. You're good to go. And then sticks and mineral water are things you're going to buy in the store um, as part of this mod. So if we go into the store under pallets, if we scroll down through here, we have mineral water bucket, $19 for 500 liters. So not very expensive. And stick cage, that's going to be 700 liters of sticks for $85. So again, also not very ex not very expensive there. Um, now the last thing you're going to need, so again, we have our flour. Here's a pallet of flour, which I can move because I have liftable pallets installed. That mod installed by Yas Modding, um, which I'll have that linked down below in the description if you want that. Um, so yeah, again, by Yas Modding, that is the liftable pallets mod. I did have issues using um, Super Strength in um, the easy development commands to be able to move flower pallets. So that was kind of interesting. And these ones you'll be able to move regardless um, if you're on console or anything else like that. And this uh, mod does work. Um, for all platforms, so just be aware of that. It does work for all platforms. But again, mineral water, you can move by hand. This, you can move by hand. And then this red basket, which I'll talk about in a second, you can move that by hand. This, you normally cannot, but I can because I have liftable pallets installed. So just be aware of that. So these are the four ingredients or four things you're going to need. Now, the red basket, which we haven't talked about, is going to be found under pallets right here, $23. This is what your artisan bread is going to go into. So this is what you're going to place it into. So these are the four ingredients you're going to need, and this is um, in order to make the artisan bread. So if we go up here, again, we already have it activated. So we need to get the ingredients in here. Um, so the flour, what you're going to do is you should take a forklift or anything, and you're going to get it right in here. It just goes right inside the door. There you go. That's where the flour is going to go. Now the water, you're going to come in here. It's not going to go right here, you're going to see. You're going to come off to the right side. Now this fire will go away if you turn this off. Um, but right over here, this is where your mineral water is going to go, right there. And then your sticks are going to go right. Oop, if I didn't, don't, I just threw them on top of the roof, of course, because I got stuck on there. But that's okay at the end there. I don't know where they're at now. But anyhow, what we'll do is just grab this pallet here, since we have it sitting out here. So sticks, oh, they went right where they're supposed to. So they somehow got over here where they needed to go. But again, you're just going to take them and put them um, right in here, which actually it's not going to take anymore, it looks like. Um, it should take some more sticks, but it doesn't look like... There we go. Got it to actually take them. So there you go. That's where the sticks are going to go is right there. And that's all your ingredients. So what's going to happen? And I thought this was going to be more interactive and more, uh, I, to be quite honest, um, annoying to do, but it really isn't. So you don't have to do anything other than pick up the bread when it's done out of the oven here. This is where it's going to spawn as little pieces of bread. And then that's where your red basket comes into play. You'll need to take it and put it into this basket here. So we have this sitting here. We're just going to go ahead and fast forward some time. You'll see some bread start to pop up. There's one, two. They're going to start to pop in there a little bit. Just get some time going. Okay, there we go. We've got a lot of bread in there. So you just have to grab each of these individually, and then they'll just kind of pop into, and they should pop into. Of course, it's not working now. Uh, I tested it all right before this. There we go. Just got to get that trigger right. So you can pull them all out and put them in there. What I noticed, this may not be super realistic, but you can set that there and kind of just move these towards the front of the oven and it'll automatically trigger them into there. I did try moving this around to try to get the bread to go in and it didn't work. So this is the method that seems to work the best. Now a full pallet of bread is going to be 600 liters, which we might have pretty close to that. 
um, sitting here for us. Um, let's go ahead and move them up here to the front. We'll see how much this fills the, the pallet itself. Oh, it might not take that one. Yep, 600 liters. There we go. So that's a full pallet of bread. Um, essentially right here is 600 liters worth. Um, and then all you have to do for this, which I actually don't think, and I didn't even bother checking, um, I don't think that this um, mod has a sell. Oh, it does. The market sell point right there. So there's a sell point. So we're just going to place that just outside oh, the shop area. That's because I have something else out there. We'll place that outside so we do have a sell point for it. If we go into here, uh, we'll go back under here. 33 hundred dollars per thousand liters so and again we'll talk about the profitability at the very end here but if i take this outside and just take it to the market sell point it's going to sell that for us and we get this nice beautiful red basket back for us to reuse in our next production but there you guys go that is how you are going to use this right here now if we go back into the production menu here it's on storing which is pretty much where we're going to want it um selling it should automatically sell it for you um and distributing there's nowhere for it to go so it'll just sit in there and it may not actually pop any bread out so i just leave it on storing um, but that's that's really all there is to it. That's how you're gonna make the bread. So there's no other process You just got to pull it out of there and call it good But there you go And if you wanted to turn that flame off you could just deactivate it and it should there you go shut down the flame right there for you Or you can reactivate it to turn it back on there you go That is the artisan bread and now I will see you guys over at our next production All right, one last thing about the bread if you actually set it in here while it's running towards the back, it will just automatically go into there as it spawns in. You don't have to worry about it. But regardless of that, let's go ahead and hop over here where we're going to make some tomato juice. So right here, in order to place a couple things down, what we're going to need, if we go into here under production, all the way to the very end, we're going to need right here this guy, the tomato juice production. You can place it down. It's going to be 31000 to buy. You're also going to need this sell point, which I'm just going to place right here for us, um, which is where we're going to sell our tomato juice in addition to all of our other products for this. And then now that we have this down, we're good to go. If we go into our production menu right here, tomato juice. So it has tomatoes and mineral water to make tomato juice. Those are incoming materials, outgoing materials. We do need to activate this to start it going. It's gonna run at 1,440 cycles per month, which means if you have your days or your month set to one day per month, this is gonna happen every day. Two days per month, this is gonna happen every two days and so on and so forth. And that means this is gonna happen 1,440 times. Um, so yeah, there we go. Now material's missing. It's not running because we don't have anything in it right now. And if you need to know how to get tomatoes, which are a base game product, the card's going to pop up on your screen right now to be able to look at my video on greenhouses, which is how you're going to produce tomatoes. But regardless of that, let's talk about how we're going to get the other thing here, which we need is mineral water. So again, tomatoes, standard in-game item. Then we need mineral water, and then we need these crates to put our tomato juice in. So if we go into the store, we go under pallets. We scroll across here, we're gonna to come to mineral water, $19 per 500 liters, so you can buy it right in here. And then right here, we need this plastic box, which is gonna hold tomato juice. Now the trick here, click on it. Up here, this is for strawberry yogurt. There's tomato juice. It also has ketchup and soy drink in it. But again, we need the blue ones for tomato juice, so make sure you have the correct one selected. And then there you go, you have it out here. These are the materials we need. So where are we gonna put these in? Now I can lift these right now because I'm using the liftable pallets mod, which is linked down below in the description. However, you normally will have to use a forklift to lift these. However, these two items you can move by hand. So if I take this, I'm gonna move it just in here, which this is the trigger for it. That's gonna get all put into there. And then over here is where we're gonna put our mineral water. So we're gonna grab that. And there's of course the wrench to activate or to get into the menu there. So I'm gonna put the mineral water in and it's really that simple. It's all that we have to really have to do to put in everything for this. So it has mineral water and tomatoes. If we go into here, it's still loading the tomatoes in, but it has tomatoes and mineral water now. So it's good to go. And we have it activated. So then what's going to happen if we just kind of fast forward a little bit of time here. This, there we go. Then we have tomato juice is going to start popping up on here. And all we have to do is just grab this and move it into there. Now one trick, if you wanted to, you can put this on the shelf right here. And then as it spawns in, it will automatically go into there. So if I fast forward some more time, you can see they're just automatically getting spawned and put into this right here. And we only got a few out of there, but there we go. You can get up to 24 in here. Now, each of these does count as its own pallet, each one of these little bottles of tomato juice. So it's really going to affect your pallet limit if you're on console. But once you have this, we can take it out here and we can sell it right here at this sell point. And then we get our blue plastic bin back. And you can see if we go into here all the way down to the bottom, tomato juice sells right now for $4,059 per thousand liters, which is pretty good price for it right now, it seems. But regardless of that, that is how you're going to use this portion of the mod, which is the tomato juice production facility here. And again, we'll talk about the profitability at the very end. But we're going to go ahead and move on to the next one. All right, the next portion of this video is going to be talking about how to make ketchup here. So first off, we need to place the factory, which is going to be found under production. If we go all the way down to back here, we have this guy right here, which is going to make your ketchup. 
This is $28,000 to place, so you just place that guy down. Then we're also going to need under sell points, we're going to need the market stall, which I know we already have one right there, but I'm just going to go ahead and put another one um, in here, because why not? There we go. We have another market sell right there. Um, and then in order to make ketchup, if we go into our production menu here, we can turn tomato juice off. Um, ketchup right here, so it's going to take tomatoes and sugar to make ketchup. Now, these are both base game items here. So on your screen right now, I'm going to have a card pop up um, for how to use the greenhouses, which is going to be these guys right here, and then another one for how to make sugar um, as well. So greenhouses are going to be able to make your tomatoes, and then sugar is going to be made in a sugar mill, which I'll have a uh, card again pop up in your screen uh, about how to make that as well. Now, a couple things to note here. We have our incoming materials with tomatoes and sugar, and then our outgoing materials here. You don't really need to change the output mode. You want to keep it on storing. On cycles per month, it's 1,440 cycles per month, which means if you have your game set to one-day months, this is going to happen 1,440 times per day. And if it's two days per month, or yeah, two days per month, then this is going to happen every 1,440 times every two days, and so on and so forth. Now, first thing we're going to do is come over here. We're going to activate this, so now it's running. But again, nothing's happening because nothing's going in. Here's a standard pallet of sugar, standard pallet of tomatoes, and then this guy right here, which we're going to need to put our ketchup in right here. Now, normally you can't lift these. You'd have to use a forklift. I have the liftable pallet mod, uh, liftable pallets mod by Yoss installed, which allows me to lift these guys up. Um, but this guy right here, this is where your finished bottles of ketchup are going to go into for transport. You're going to be able to find this if you go into the store and you go under pallets and we scroll over here. We're going to find it. It's going to be this guy right here, which has ketchup listed. But when you get in here, you have to make sure you adjust this over to ketchup because it'll do other ingredients as well. So make sure you buy ones that are ketchup. And these are reusable as well. So once we get our three ingredients, we're good to go. So again, I'm gonna carry these in because I can, but normally you can just use these ramps and you can turn them and get them in here however you need to. I'm gonna show you where each item goes. So right here, this first dumping point right here, this trigger is gonna be for your tomatoes. So they're going in right there. Now sugar is gonna go in that very back one, which as you come in here, it's gonna say sugar is not accepted there, which is fine. Then as we get over here to this trigger, it's gonna take our sugar right there. And if we come in here, we can see we have both of the ingredients, which means now it's going to start producing ketchup. So we're going to need to take this guy inside and come over here where the ketchup is going to start appearing, which if we fast forward just a little bit of time here, we're going to see a bottle of ketchup appear. So there we go. There's our bottle of ketchup. Beautiful. Now what you're going to have to do, take it and simply put it in this bin right here. So there you go. It's in there. Now one thing I noticed, which is easier to do, is if you take this bin and you put it, sit it on the shelf right here, then as we fast forward time, the ketchup bottles, as they are created, are just going to go right into that bin just like that. So there we go. I don't think we have uh, enough materials to make anything else. Yeah, we're out of tomatoes. But now that we have some ketchup, we can sell it. So again, we can take it out. Oop, we're throwing it now. But if we take it out to this market area right here, boom. There we go. We're able to sell it all off right there. So we got, what, about $1,400, $1,500 for that. Um, and if we go into the menu here, we can see... Under here, ketchup, currently at $39.62 for one of our markets, $37 at the other market stall. That's just these two markets right here. Uh, so there you go. That's how you're going to make ketchup and everything like that. We're going to talk about the profitability at the very end, but for now, we're going to move on to the next item. All right, so next up, we have the soy drink production. So first off, as always, we'll start off going into here under production. If we scroll down to the very end, we're going to want this bad boy right here, which produces the soy drink. It's going to cost you $44,000 to place. And the other thing we're going to need is we go to selling points, we're going to need this little market stall uh, thing right here to be able to sell the uh, soy drink and those other products at right there. So get those two placed down. Um, then what we need for this is we're going to need soybeans, which you can place in these little boxes, which these boxes are for sale in the store. So you can either use a tractor like this to dump it into a box. You have something like this. So you can't move these around with super strength, I should note. Um, or you can just, if you have something small enough, you can back it in here and load the soybeans in that way. You also need this guy right here, which is going to be some mineral water. And you need this guy right here, which is going to hold your soy drink in it. So um, again, we have those materials up here and a couple of them down here. And I'm going to back this guy in to unload it. So essentially the process here, in order to get all these materials, if we go into here, go under pallets, you can find your empty wooden boxes that hold 1,000 liters of soybeans right here. You can buy them for $100. They are reusable. Um, you also can buy your mineral water barrels right here for $19. Not reusable. And then up here, plastic boxes. So you see it says soy drink down here. So we're going to click on this. And that says strawberry yogurt, ketchup. There we go, soy drinks. You want to buy these guys right here that are on the soy drink category. And that way they'll hold your soy drink in them and you can take it to sell using this. Um, these are reusable, I should note as well. But there you go. That's how you're going to get all the materials. So in terms of this, since we have it placed down, if we go in the production menu, I'm going to deactivate that one. Here is soy drink right here. So I'm going to go ahead and just activate it while we're in here. We need to activate it to get it to work. 
Um, up here it says materials missing, so we don't have anything in here. The endpoints are soybeans and mineral water, and you get soybean or soy drink out. Uh, so cycles per month, so 1,440 cycles. So this recipe, it will do 1,440 times per month. And this recipe is 13 liters of soybeans, 8.6 liters of mineral water, and 9.9 .9 liters of uh, soy drink there. So again, um, this is just regular soybeans that you would harvest in a field or anything like that. Um, so pretty straightforward in how to get those. Now, up here, again, the 1440, um, that's going to be if you have it set to one day months, it'll happen every day. This will happen 1,440 times. If you have it set to two day months, this will happen every 1,440 times every two days and so on and so forth. So again, we just need to get the materials in and this guy will be good to go. So we'll start off by getting the soybean in. So if I just hop in this guy, and again, you can use anything that can actually fit into this factory or you can, you can load it into the soybean boxes by just dumping it in there. So I come up here, I'm just going to hit I to unload. It's going to put the soybeans in there. And I'm actually going to load this guy up one more time here with some soybeans. Um, because I just want to demonstrate using the boxes. So if I have this empty box over here and I just want to put some soybeans in it, I just need to back up to it. Now it'll look a little weird because this guy's a little not very high off the ground. So it's going to lift me up a little bit as I, I unload it like that. But you just back up to it, you get an unload trigger and I'll unload it into that box there. So there you go. Now what we need to do is get some mineral water in here. So I'm going to grab our mineral water. We'll just pass the soybean area here back to this guy right here. So this is your trigger for your soy or your mineral water. This is your trigger for your soybeans. So you can see there's some nice little fill types and animations. You do have a wrench if you want to access the production menu, which it's now working. And they will start spawning in over here. So what we need to do is grab our crate. Have to grab it. There we go. Oop, I closed the door on us. That's no good there. So I can't get it to actually open up again. There we go. We grab the crate from the outside so we don't do that again. There we go. Get our crate inside over here because they're going to start spawning. We'll fast forward a little bit of time here. We should get one. So there you go. Once you get one there, you just grab it and you just have to move it into this bin and it'll go in. Now, the easier way to do this is if you do this in here, get it on the shelf and over here. You probably could put multiple in there as well. Fast forward time a little bit. It's just going to put them in there as it goes, which I think it's done now. So I think we only had enough to do, yeah, only a little bit of the soy drink here. So we have 300 liters of the soy drink. Now, in order to sell it, you're just going to take it to this market sell point drop it off and it is selling and then there you go you got $900 for that and this bin is empty so pretty straightforward that's how you're going to make the soy drink right there and again we'll talk about the profitability at the very end but let's go ahead and jump over to making some strawberry yogurt all right for our final product is strawberry yogurt we'll go ahead and start again off by placing the facilities so we're talking about how to place them so if we go into production down here at the very end strawberry yogurt or the yogurt production it's $36,000 to place that bad boy there then our selling points you're also going to need one of these market stalls right here which we already have placed um, I'll just put another one. It doesn't doesn't really matter. We can just get rid of that guy here yeah, or whatever. It doesn't matter. But anyhow, yeah, you just got to have one of those down. doesn't matter. Just get one of those down there. Uh, but there you go. So um, if we go now into the production menu, if we go into here, go down to strawberry yogurt. So what we need to make this is milk, strawberries, and sugar. And our output's going to be strawberry yogurt. So again, milk, strawberry, sugars, incoming materials, and then strawberry yogurt as the outgoing products there. Um, so there you go. You want to keep this on storing. Uh, the first thing we need to do is we need to activate this and it's good to go. Now this is the recipe, so 4.5 liters of milk plus 8 liters of strawberries plus 1.25 liters of sugar to get 6.2 liters of yogurt. Um, up here it's going to run at 1440 cycles per month, so it's going to do this recipe 1440 times per month. Um, if you have your days set to one days per month, then again this can happen every day. If it's two days per month, then it's going to happen every two days and so on and so forth. But now that we have that done, we need to get a hold of the materials, which we're going to need strawberries, which I have just standard pellets, which if you don't know how to use or get strawberries, um, a card is going to pop up on your screen right now um, for how to use the greenhouses. Um, and then, again, we also need sugar, which if you don't know how to make sugar, a sugar card will pop up on your screen to show you how to make sugar. And the last thing we need is this little guy right here in addition to the milk. So this is going to be just a little bin that we need to put the yogurt in once it's ready to go, which this can be found in the store. If we go under pallets, scroll down to here, we click on this guy right here. Now, this does everything, so make sure it's set to strawberry yogurt, but it also does the other ones there. But you want to have it on strawberry yogurt for it to work. And these will be able to be reused. So, and the last thing we need is some milk, which I have this special custom milk tanker that's in here because normal milk tankers in base game won't fit in that door, which you do have to back this thing in there, which is kind of annoying. But regardless of that, it's not too big, big of a deal, to be honest. Um, if we go under, if we go to the store here, go under miscellaneous um, and scroll to the very end, you're going to find that tanker right there, which you can adjust the color if you'd like to on it, but it's going to hold 3,000 liters of milk. It's a custom tanker that came with this mod pack. So you'll need to buy that. Now to get stuff into here, we'll go ahead and put the milk in first. So we just got to back this guy in. 
It's going to be that furthest trigger back. So you see, we're going to go past this, the, the first two triggers you see just behind us here next to those shelves. It's not either of those triggers. It's a little bit difficult to get in here. We seem to get it kind of close-ish. We need to go a little bit further in there. If I back it up, there we go. That should do it. There we go. We got a trigger pop up. It's back here is where the milk's going to go in that very back portion of the warehouse. You can see kind of in that back corner. So we'll go ahead and unload that milk into there. Give it a second to unload here. And after we get all the milk in, then we'll get the strawberries and the sugar put in. And I'll show you guys how to get some strawberry yogurt rolling. There we go. Perfect. Let's pull this guy out of our way. We don't need him anymore. Now if we go up this way, we want to take our strawberries. They're going to go to this first trigger right here. So I'm just going to put that guy right there. And I'll just put another bin of strawberries in there as well. Why not? So there we go. And then sugar is going to go behind the strawberries. So I can say sugar not accepted here. It's because it's accepted back here. That's where we want to put it. And those things are just slowly unloading into there. And then we should, if we go into here, we should see that we have all of our materials that we need. And it's good to go. So now I'm going to bring this over here to this table, which is where our yogurt is going to spawn. So if I fast forward just a little bit of time here, we're going to see one's going to spawn up there just like that. And then all you have to do with this little yogurt is take it, put it into this yellow bin here. Ooh, if I can actually get it in there. There we go. Now, one easier way to do this is to just put this yellow bin on the shelf here. And then if we fast forward time, as they are created, they will just spawn into that bin right there, which is a little bit easier for grabbing and stuff like that. So let's go a little bit quicker here. There we go. We've got a few in there. So now the last thing, now we have some strawberry yogurt. Again, you can fill this all the way up. It says only 550 liters in it right now. Uh, we can take this outside and we can take it over to our market here. And we can sell it. And you can see they're disappearing. There it go. We just made some money off of that, about two grand off of that right there. And then we can bring this back over to make some more. Now, that is how you use every single one of these items or every single one of these factories in this pack. I apologize. This video's been a little bit longer and it's still going to keep going. But now I'm going to pull up a chart on your screen. Uh, this chart has all the different products listed on it. And I'm going to talk about how I got those products and the profits per cycle. So, um, this again, if I go down the list here, so it's interactive productions. These are the steam price sheet for pricing, which is linked down below in the description if you need that. So again, steam price sheet is what I use to get the base game product prices. Um, and then if we go down from there, economic difficulty is normal. So this is your output prices and input prices on economic difficulty normal. And I did not include the cost for those little reusable crates we had to buy on each one of the productions because they're a one-time fee, just like the factory is in my opinion. So there we go. Um, now, if we hop down here, down below to the very bottom at prices used. So I have $900 per thousand liters for flour. And again, that's from the steam price sheet. Uh, then I have prices for tomato, sugar, soy, uh, strawberries, and milk, all from the steam price sheet. Then the sticks and mineral water from the store price. So those are the prices that you pay for them in the store. And then down at the very bottom, the artisan bread, tomato juice, ketchup, soy drink, strawberry yogurt. Those prices are all the best historical prices. So what I did to get those historical prices is I placed a bunch of the market stalls down and fast forwarded a couple years to see what kind of how the prices would sit on a map. So that's how I got those prices down there. Now, if we go back up to our chart, it has each item. So artisan bread, tomato juice, ketchup, soy drink, and strawberry yogurt. The input cost, the input cost is how much it would cost if you look at um, that production cycle that we talked about. So if you look at your production cycle for each one of these, um, that's how much it would cost or how much you would make if you sold the product separately or didn't buy them for in the case of sticks and mineral water. So that is how much it's costing you to put those materials in. And then the output, that is how much you're making by selling the products you're getting out, which is going to be either the artisan bread, tomato juice, ketchup, soy drink, strawberry yogurt, and so on. So uh, basically, it's looking at, is it worth it to actually put those ingredients in and buy those ingredients? Or is it better off just not buying those ingredients and selling the ingredients separately? And in all cases, it was worth it to put the ingredients in. Um, the lowest profitability was the artisan bread. You're only going to make $13.10 per cycle. But again, there are 1,440 cycles per day. So that means you're going to make 18,860, or excuse me, 1,440 cycles per month. So you're going to make $18,864 per month if you're using that production. And then the most profitable one was the ketchup at $29.36 per cycle. And you can make up to forty-two dollars or $43,000 per month uh, doing that production chain. Um, but that's everything I have for you guys. So uh, there you go. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Hopefully it was helpful to you guys. If you guys enjoyed, please drop a like down below. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button up on the screen to join the Farmer Cop channel and turn your notification bell so you don't miss any future videos I may post. This has been Farmer Cop. Thank you guys for coming and for watching.